This is a secret that consecrates the deepest presence of God on your life to know that God does not lie. Simply to know that God is not a man that he should lie. If he promised that he will live, I don't care whether your family is a lineage of diabetes. You're going to be the first one to outlive diabetes in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because God spoke you into existence. He says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. You cannot die. You cannot die early. Why? Because the counsel of God's life is sure. Oh, but some people die. You are not them. One time I flew somewhere in uh, the United States. I enter this church, very old Christian church, and I get this word of knowledge, and I say, there is somebody here who is crippled, paralyzed from your waist down. There was a man on my left in the corner. He had, I think, got in an accident about four or five years ago, and was paralyzed from waist down. He could not walk, crippled in a wheelchair. So I, I pray, and after making that prayer, the man stood up and started walking. The church screamed. Church screamed. They had seen a miracle. And then after service, the pastor calls me and says, you're never welcome here again. So I said, why? He said, because you, we, we, you sensed an error in your teaching. You said that God can heal all diseases. And I told him, but he has just displayed it in your chair. He says, yes, we've seen that miracle. We've never seen one. It's new. But you've said God can heal every disease. We don't believe in that doctrine. So I asked this man, so when you tell people with God all things are possible, what do you mean? What do you mean when you say with God all things are possible? He says, yeah. Uh, it, it depends on the context and the content in which you you know they have their English <laughs> they never invited me back again I had never seen people reject God so some of you think that miracles change people's hearts don't be mistaken the children of Israel saw sees part they saw them part before their eyes and when they saw, they saw Egyptians sinking in water. And after that, this man goes on the mountain 40 days. And they command the people, bring the rings on your noses. Bring the rings on your ears. Bring the ring, I mean the gold in your ears and the gold in your noses. They smelt it together and put together a, a molten image. And they say, the Bible says in Exodus, this is the God who parted the seas for you. Worship him. Only 40 days after, Moses comes back to the congregation and Israel has turned its eyes and their heart from their maker. Just 40 days away. Because they needed something to worship at any cost. The Bible tells you with every miracle the Israelites saw, they all died. Only their gen the generation of their children are the only people that were preserved and, the, 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 and, and Joshua and Caleb. All of them saw miracles, signs and wonders but they died in the wilderness. You can do any miracle on the earth. A man can never understand God only by the power of miracle. It introduces and affirms what we are saying, but it is not the core distinction that convicts a man to know God. This begins with the consecration of your heart, my son. Give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Now look at this portion of scripture I just read. God says, I have something I call the immutability of my counsel. When I came to Abraham and I promised him and I told him, surely in blessing I'll bless you and in multiplying I'll multiply you. He says, I looked for a way to convince Abraham because he was human and I said, how can I swear? Because when men swear an oath, they swear by one greater. But God says, I'm not great, nobody, nothing is greater than me. But how, how do I affirm what I've shared? What, how do I put it in the heart of this person, what I have promised them? Because I can't swear by anybody greater than me. I am God. Nothing is bigger or greater than I. So he says, okay. What I will do, 
I'll simply swear by my name. This is what God says. Who am I? I am Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. But I cannot swear by anything greater than my name. But I can put the integrity of my name online to say that everything that I have said in the line of my provisions, if it does not come to pass, then I'm not it. I'm Jehovah Rapha, your healer. Yeah, I'm suffering from an incurable disease. I'm suffering from an incurable... I have a young man in the ministry. <laughs> this young man, he, you know, he lived a very sad life and he contracted HIV at a very early age and, and you know, he came in the church and he started serving very faithfully, very, very faithfully. And one day he walks to me and told me, Apostle Grace, one day I'll walk to you without HIV in this blood. So I'm curious, I ask him, so where do you get the confidence? And he says, in God's word. How many people can you tell that God heals cancer? And they say, ah, yes, we believe. No, very many will say, ah, God heals, but this is stage four. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, God heals, but this is HIV. God heals, but this is it is a, maybe it is also the will of God for the person to what? To die. I tell you, this boy sat under the word and started hearing. Now it is three years we've been checking him. Three. Three. One, two, three. There is no virus in his body. Why? Because he understands the immutability. When God said, I have blessed you, he means I have blessed you. When God says, by my stripes, 1 Peter 2, 24, he is on self bore our sins on the cross, that we being dead and two sins should live unto righteousness, by his stripes ye were healed. He means you were healed. But my heart pumps at night, my liver is not feeling well, my kidneys are out of order. I don't care what's out of order. Nothing changes the immutability of God's counsel. Nothing changes the immutability of God's counsel. What has God said? Hallelujah. He says that none among them shall be barren. Whether you want it or not, woman of God, you will give birth. You know, when I read such portions of scriptures, that's when I realized I had to be. Tell your neighbor I had to be. Because God spoke you into existence. He says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. You cannot die. You cannot die early. Why? Because the counsel of God's life is sure. Oh, but some people die. You are not them. But the people, it's a reality. Yes, it's the reality. People die. But it's the truth that with long life I will satisfy you and reveal my salvation to you. So the question ultimately is never what is God able and willing to do. It's what are you able to believe of God? What's your report? Ask your neighbor whose report will you believe? Hallelujah. He said where the priests used to go. Now God has said because of the immutability of my counsel. This is the anchor that keeps you and allows you to access the holy place behind the veil. I mean this is the thing that consecrates the deepest presence of God on your life. This secret here. This is a secret that consecrates the deepest presence of God on your life. To know that God does not lie. Simply to know. That God is not a man that he should lie. If he promised that you will live, I don't care whether your family is a lineage of diabetes. You're going to be the first one to outlive diabetes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is not the best you can be. MPs, I'm talking to you. For some of you, this is the beginning of your life. You're about to see greater days. You are about to see greater glories. You are about to ascend in higher offices. Why? Because God says that the path of the just shines brighter and brighter. The longer they live, the Bible says, the brighter they shine. I am certain that in the next four years of your life, you're going to look better than you're looking right now in the mighty name of Jesus. There's somebody who's saying, ah, apostle, that's my point. I'm talking about the immutability of God's counsel. 
I'm talking about you getting to a point and saying that even though the doctors have said that my organs are failing, but I trust in the integrity of God's word. That he is not a man that he should lie. He has not spoken and it shall not come to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Joshua 21 verses 45. There failed no part of any good thing which the Lord had promised to the house of Lubega. Lubega. Put your name. All came to Tell your neighbor I'm not dying now. Tell him I'm not going to fail. No weapon fashion against me. Tell them shall prosper. Tell them I'm going forward. He says this is the anchor that holds you in the deepest presence because in the Old Testament remember behind the veil meant the holy of holies so where priests used to go to move God he says when you when you when you believe this faith when you connect to this you are in a place where you can move God and the Bible says and in that place Jesus your forerunner last verse has gone in advance for you do you know what that means? The Bible says, where the forerunner, forerunner means one who goes ahead. He has entered, even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He is for us entered. It means, before you went in the presence of God to ask for a job, Jesus went. Such that God doesn't answer <laughs> because you prayed only. That is why you must understand why the power of thanksgiving is a revelation. Because if Jesus has gone there before for you, when you enter, how do you pray? Hey, I'll take it there. That's why the Bible says, do not be anxious about, but with, by, by prayer, and with, let your requests be known unto God. Which comes first? Request or thanksgiving? Why? Because your forerunner has gone there before. If Jesus entered and said, your daughter should not suffer of sickness, God has heard. So when you enter with your prayer, he says, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known. How do you, with thanksgiving, make a request known? If you want a car, how do you say? Eh? For my car. That's how you pray. But some of you say, Father, I ask for a car. Give me a car. Thank you. When, when you say, Father, I ask, you are, uh -huh. you, you, you are counseling. You, you're, you're forgotten that Jesus has already done, he has gone there in advance for you. So when I'm going in the presence, this is how I pray. Seriously. If I want a car, I say, Father, I thank you. Because you have given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. You have blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What of them I see this? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, He that gave you Christ, if He did, how will He? The Bible says, he, he did not withhold anything. I wish you get that scripture for me. Thank you. He that spared not His Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us? Now, you look at Jesus and you look at a Mercedes and say, mm -mm. <laughs> he gave me more hallelujah praise the lord what do you believe god to see it's all given by christ now i want to thank god with you and as we end this year even in thanksgiving this is the spirit the spirit of why we are thanking god in the close of this year even this session and i thank god that he led us in this and thank god for the message he gives us this morning is for you to reflect just how much is already available for you. People, we have deceived ourselves and been deceived by the doctrines of men. Let God be true and every man a liar. You will not die. You will live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Your children will not fail. There's a parent here with a child who's suffering with drugs and what? Hold on to the promise. 
none of his words shall not come to pass he says your children shall be for signs and they shall be for wonders they will be potent none of your children listen to me every parent in this house will fail God will make a way where there seems to be no way.